All right. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to be in the book of John. I'm going to start in the book of John this evening. I'm going to start in chapter 10 of the book of John, towards the end of the chapter, verse 39. Jesus had been talking to the people and uh, telling them how he, he was the, shep the good shepherd and um, people were starting to, uh, there was starting to be a division among the people about what he was saying and uh, he was saying that, you know, telling them that they didn't believe because they weren't of his flock. And in verse 39 it says that therefore they sought again to take him but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John had first baptized and there he abode. Now, there have been other times too when the crowd got angry uh, with the words that Jesus spoke and they wanted to, they wanted to take him and uh, one time they wanted to throw him off a cliff. Uh, but Jesus, however Jesus did it, you know, he is the son of God so he, he just... He would just escape them. He would just make their way, make his way through the crowd, and they couldn't lay a hand on him because it was not, it was not his appointed time. So he, so he went away, and it says in verse forty-one, many resorted unto him, and said, "John, I'm talking about John the Baptist. John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true, uh -huh, yeah. and many believed." on him there. there yeah. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you once again for the opportunity to gather here in your house this evening and worship you yeah. and give you all the praise you deserve. Lord, open our hearts and our ears to receive yeah. your word this evening. Lord, and I ask that you just Hallelujah. that you just guide me in my message this evening so, so I may preach this message the way that you want it preached, yeah. Lord. <laughs> we thank you, Lord, and ask all this in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> So there were some, so there were some in the, in the crowd who were uh, starting to believe. Yeah, Jesus had the hardest time uh, convincing the Jews that he was the Son of God. As you as you read, you know that the Gentiles were more uh, acceptable of it. They were they were eager to hear Jesus, but uh, of course the Jews were being they were being fed a uh, bunch of malarkey from the Pharisees and the Sadducees who also did not want to believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They didn't want, they didn't want Jesus around because he was cutting in on their territory. But, then, but, then, but there were some of those that said, well, you know, the things that John spoke, but they are true. You know, and to see what, and you read about, of course, you read about John the Baptist in all the Gospels when he comes onto the scene He's in the river Jordan. He's baptizing, he's baptizing people. Baptism of repentance. You know, he says, you know, I'm the, I'm the voice crying out in the wilderness. Prepare, prepare you the way. Uh, when you look at the first chapter of John, go back a few pages. First chapter of John, in verse 15, it says, John bear witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. Right. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. Yeah. For he was before me. Right. And of his fullness have all we received in grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked, so what? Art, art thou Elias? And he says, I am not. Art thou that prophet? He answered, no. And they said, well, who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, <laughs> as said the prophet Isaiah. And they said, well, in the Pharisees, they which were sent were of the Pharisees, and they asked him and said, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered, saying, I baptize with water. 
But there standeth one among you whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it I am not worthy right. to unloose. <laughs> These things were done in Beth Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold the Lamb of God, yeah. which takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I coming, therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him and I knew him not but he that sent me to baptize with water the same said unto me upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him the same as he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost Amen. and I saw listen to this and bear record yeah. that this is the, is the Son of God Amen yeah. The next day after John stood and two of his disciples looking upon Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. And if you go further in that, in that chapter, it says that two, two of John's disciples, they got up, they started following Jesus because they believed what John was telling them. So here's John, man, he's He's telling about the Messiah, you know, saying he, he's mightier than I. I'm not, you know, I shouldn't even, you know, I can't even unlatch his shoe. And when you read the other Gospels, you know, Jesus, you know, he came, came into the Jordan, approached John to be baptized, said, you know, I should be baptized by you. And you're, you're coming to me? You know, he, he just yeah. did not, was not, felt he was not worthy to baptize Jesus. So he tells the people all these things about the Messiah. And then, later, and then a little later on in John 3, they, uh, they, they, come, to, they come to John because they saw Jesus and the disciples, uh, they saw them baptizing. And, you know, of course, John, before that, they just knew that John was baptizing people into repentance. And now they see Jesus and his disciples that he has. And they come unto John, and John 3 verse 26, they come to John, they said, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan to whom thou bear witness, behold the same baptizes and all men come to him. So John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. Yeah. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, I must decrease. Amen. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He that comes from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard, that he testifies, and no man receives his testimony. He that receives his testimony has said to his seal that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the word of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He that believes on the Son has everlasting, everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The powerful words from John the Baptist he was never one to mince words. You know, when, he, when the Pharisees came on, you know, came to the Jordan while he was baptizing, he called them, you know, brood of vipers, you know, and said, you know, who told you? You know, and then don't, don't, don't quote to me that you're a son of Abraham because God can make sons of Abraham from these very stones. Sure can. He didn't mince, he didn't mince any words. He didn't pull his punches. And he was happy to tell of Jesus Christ. If you remember, uh, it, I believe it's in the Gospel of Luke, uh, you read about, you know, when John is still in the womb uh, and Mary Mary comes to visit her cousin. You know, Mary is uh, pregnant with Jesus, you know, and as soon as Mary walks in, 
You know, it says that it says that the baby John left in the womb. Left in the womb. So even in the womb, John knew he was in the presence of something mightier than he. He knew he was in the presence of God. As a baby in the womb. And I could really go off and talk about that. Because there are those who think that the child in the womb is not a child. Wrong. But uh, Wrong. that verse, those verses in Luke proves that they are living, breathing human beings. And John was so excited. Yeah. You know, and, and then when he's, as he approached, the, as he was in adulthood and, and when, his, when, his time, when, when his time was ready, he proclaimed, this is he, this is he who, who the prophets talked about. And you read about it. You read, you read about Jesus all through the Bible. All through the Old Testament. There's, there's prophecies about the coming Messiah. And, and I, you know, there are so many that you could draw up. But I didn't, I didn't go to... I, I stuck mainly with Isaiah because there's so much, uh, so much prophecy about Jesus in Isaiah. Yeah. Uh, of course, one of the, one of the more uh, famous verses is, is in Isaiah 7, verse 14. Where it says, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Amen. Emmanuel. In chapter 9 of Isaiah, in verse 6, it says, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Counselor mighty the God. Mighty God. The everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, ever, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Hallelujah. Yes. Isaiah 11 talks about a rod coming out of the stem of Jesse, a branch growing out of the roots. You know, that branch is Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Yeah. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Of the Lord. Even foretells, foretells, it foretells of Jesus in his adulthood. In Isaiah 53, a very, a very well-known chapter in, a, in, a, in the book of God. Who, Isaiah 53, starting at the beginning, who has believed our report? Who is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. Has no form or comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised. We esteemed him not. Surely he's borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Right. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Yeah. So many things, so so many scriptures. By the time Jesus was born, you know the the the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all the scholars, they had they had the entire Old Testament to read, to study, to tell them that there was one coming, a Messiah who was coming. And then John foretells it too, and yet, yet there are those who do not want to believe. <clears throat> Some even said, well, isn't he Joseph's son? The, the carpenter? Come on. I mean, you kidding me? That's basically what they said. You know, you're kidding me? Jesus? He's a carpenter. Then even one of the, uh, even early early on in John, when uh, I think it was Nathaniel, 
You know, someone was saying, hey, we found the Messiah. You know, they said, well, can anything good come out of Nazareth? They said, come and see. Come and see. And of course, as he discovered, yes, something very good came out of Nazareth. Amen. The Son of God. Amen. Oh, man. Thank you, Lord. What a mighty, what a great ministry Jesus <clears throat> had on this earth for some three, three and a half years. Ministering to the people, healing, healing the sick, and even raising, raising the dead. And he, he would do miracles. He would perform signs and wonders. Yes, he did. Maybe he can stop that. I don't know. Or increase it. <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, they're, in, they're in harmony right now. <laughs> uh, even, even, even the cars rejoice at the sound of his name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, 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 uh, where was that? His word makes a lie. Uh-huh. His word makes a lie. Yes, yeah, his word, his word, definitely his word makes a lie. And, uh, so here he he, uh, so he performed these he performed these signs these miracles these these, these healings and and the people of course the, the people marveled at the miracles and yet they just considered him a prophet or, or a great teacher you know and they said well you know he he does teach with authority like like none we've ever heard and and yet they did not want to believe the truth that John that John had told them. He didn't, they, didn't, they didn't want to believe. At least some of them did not. And yet, when you read through the Gospels, especially through the Gospel of John, you read, you know, that John would have, he would have, I mean, John Jesus would approach uh, Gentiles. You know, and, and the Gentiles, man, they were they were soaking it up. You know, but especially the, the woman at the well. You know, when she when she when she discovered that it was the Messiah who was talking to her about the rivers of living water. Yeah. And she, you know, she put her water jug down. She ran into town and said, hey, come see this man. Come see a man told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? She started witnessing right there. God. And the people came and they listened to Jesus and he, they, they begged him to stay and he stayed, what, two, three days? I can't remember exactly, you know. And they said, yes, we believe too because we have heard. But his own people, the Jewish people. Yeah. More times than not, they rejected him. That's right. Yeah. Pharisees especially, they just they just look for ways to trap him or to or to berate him, you know, especially if he you know if he healed on the Sabbath, you know, how dare you? You're, you're working on the Sabbath. He always had a good answer. Absolutely. <laughs> he always he always had a rebuke. He always had a retort. And at times you read, you know, after, after he answered them, they didn't they didn't dare ask any more questions. Because a lot of times he just he put them on the spot. He turned it around. Put you know now now you're in the now you're in the firing line. Oh, you know? So that's why they would stir up the people. Try to convince them. Try to convince them that Jesus was of the devil. That well, his, you know, he's he's doing these things by Beelzebub. You know, and Jesus would retort then and said, "Well, you know, how how can Satan cast out Satan? You know, so he, he put he put them in their place in that aspect too. He said, if, you know, if I with the finger of God cast out demons, then surely the kingdom of God has come." That's what it said. You know, and despite the, the hatred and um, despite all that that he got from the Pharisees and, and even some of his own people, he just he kept ministering. He kept loving them. Kept giving them chance after chance to, to change their minds, to, to change their hearts. Right. To, to believe, to believe that yes, what what John said 
what John spake of this man was true. That he is the Messiah. That yes, he is. He is the Lamb of God. He can take away our sins. He can heal me. Yeah. He can make the blind see. That was the other argument that in, I think it was in John 2, you know, they're saying, well, well, can a you know, can a demon make a blind man see? You know, can a sinner make a blind man see? Because that had never been done before, before Jesus. No one had made the blind see before Jesus came on the scene. I mean, the blind could see, the lame could walk, the deaf could hear, the mute could shout. What was the, what was the, I think it was Brother Squire was telling, telling the story and someone told him, you know, I just said, you know, I just don't understand why y'all, you know, why y'all, you know, stand up and shout and raise your hands and dance around. You know, I said, Jesus never did that. Brother Swagger told him, said, well, you're right. He said, but the people he touched did. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Amen. There you go. Right there, bro. When he healed a lame, he healed a lame man. Boy, they, he'd jump up. He'd jump up and start dancing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <clears throat> the one blind man, he started, he started witnessing to the Pharisees. You know, was trying to teach them. Was he was he was excommunicated. Yeah. Because he dared to stand up to the Pharisees. Trying to tell them the truth. And again, they didn't want to hear it. It's no different today. Sure, sure. You know, we probably is a little bit far worse. You know, we come in, you know, I preach the word to you, you you receive the word, you read your Bibles, you study, you're living the Christian life, and you you go out, you go out to you go to work, you go to the market, uh, go on vacation. Meet, you know, you see, you see your friends, your family, or you may, you know, you see people in the store. And you try to, uh, you look for an opportunity to tell them about Christ. Yes. To share, to share your testimony, to, to share what great things Christ has done, and tell people who who this Jesus is. Uh -huh. You know, sometimes they may. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll stand there and like, uh-huh. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, well, you know what? I'll uh, I'll give that some thought, you know. I'll, I'll go home. I'll go home and uh, and, and uh, sleep on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times they're just they're just being polite. Right. Nice. They may they may be they may be listening, but they're not hearing. It's not sinking in. Right. You know, there's so many times I've invited people to church and they'll say, well, yeah, you never know. I may show up on Sunday. Uh, they never show up. Never show up. Never show up. That's, I don't know how long I've been trying. 20 years later. Yeah. To Couldn't, you know. 5, 10, 15 years later, they're still not. Yeah, well, you know, I'm thinking about it. Uh, you know, let me think about it. Not sure. And what's funny is a lot of people, they have a sense of morality. You know, they have they have a sense of right and wrong. They, they know that sometimes actions have consequences. Because if there weren't consequences, then you could just run them up and do what you want. Not be as far as it goes. They're like, well, you know, I really, really shouldn't do that because it's wrong. They, they don't say to themselves, well, you know what, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do this because it's a sin and and it disappoints God. It breaks His heart. And if I, if I stay in my sin. Then I'm spiritually dead. And when I leave this earth, uh, I'll miss heaven. They don't think like that. No. 
You can mention Jesus, you can mention books of the Bible, and they'll just say, well, none of that really happened. This is just, uh, it's just a big fable. It's just, uh, it's just a big, uh, big work of fiction. You know, it's good, good stories. But, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get that Jesus is the son of God and all that. There's even religions out there. Like they recognize Jesus, but not as the son of God. You know, he, he was, he was just a prophet. He was just a teacher. He's just, he's just one of many ways that you can get to heaven. You know, you just uh, you light it. You just light enough candles, or you just do you just do enough. You just do everything on this list. Do everything that's listed here. Say these words. Wear the right clothes. Yeah, there are there are there's actually they they even talk about special clothing. I won't get into because it's kind of crazy. Or you can be your own god. Or you can rule your own planet when you leave here. There's all kinds of crazy stuff in the name of religion. But religion doesn't save you. A denomination does not save you. No. You know, I, you know, I'll, I'll see hashtags. You know, people just, you know, they're just so so proud to be a certain denomination. This life, that life. You know, talking about their, they'll, they'll list their denomination. You know, whatever it is, Catholic, Baptist, Methodist. Oh, I'm so so proud to be, so proud to be. Proud to be. Here. And I, I'm not saying I'm disappointed that I'm assembly of God. I mean, I'm happy to be assembly of God, but but being assembly of God is not going to save me. No, I'm not saved because I'm assembly of God. No. Not right. I'm, bless you. I'm saved because I believe. I believe what the Scripture says. I believe that it's true. I believe everything the everything these authors said was true. That Jesus is the Son of God. That He is the Messiah. That He baptizes in the Holy Spirit. That He saves. And that he's coming back. That he's preparing a room for us. Right. Yeah. That his father's house does have many rooms. That there are many mansions and he's preparing that room. And if he prepares that room, he's coming back for us. Yes, he is. Amen. He is coming back. He's going to split that eastern sky wide open. He's going to give a mighty shout. We're going to meet him in the air. Yes. Oh man, I can't wait for that. I believe all of that. Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe he's gonna, after the tribulation, he's gonna come back. He's gonna reign on earth for a thousand years. Yeah. We'll finally have that perfect government for a thousand years. And then there'll be a new heaven, a new earth. The saints of God will live forever and ever in perfect harmony and peace. No more wars, no more, uh, no more sickness, no more death, no more taxes. No more corrupt politicians. Hallelujah. I think I'm most excited about that. <laughs> If we if we don't believe if we don't believe that Jesus is Christ if we don't believe that it's true, uh, Paul said in one of his letters that if all we if our if our hope is only in this life, yeah. then we're to be pitied. Yeah, that's right. And though that there are so many of those sadly that do believe that, but this is the only life they have. So when those Yahoo preachers out there say that this is your best life now. Well, yeah. If, if, if this is if this is the only life you believe in, then yeah, this is your best life. Because when you leave this earth, it'll be far from your best. There'll be nothing good about it. Jesus said there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He said that more than once. Be cast into outer darkness. There'll be weeping. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
Revelation, you know, is another great book that tells of the Messiah. And, uh, he tells of the things that are going to happen. And I didn't, I didn't write them down, but, but so many great things. It's a great book to read. The great things that are going to happen uh, when Jesus comes back. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to come in with his army, and, but the army is really not going to have to do do much of anything because Jesus is going to defeat Satan and his legion all by himself. Amen. Jesus is that powerful because he is God. You know, make no mistake. Make no mistake. Jesus is God. And so many people, I think, they get confused sometimes. You know, they say, you know, you, you know, well, yeah, there's there's Jehovah, the, you know, the Father, and then Jesus is the Son. Then you have then you have the Holy Spirit. Uh, all three are equally God. That's right. If we're going to have any chance, if there's any chance of going to heaven, you have to believe. You can't just believe that there is a Jesus. You have to believe that he's the Son of God. You have to believe that his way is the way. You have to believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Right. And that no man gets to heaven except through him. You have to believe in that justification when you declare him as Lord and Savior. Let him begin that work on you, that regeneration. You have to believe when he says, pick up your cross. Pick up your cross daily. It's a brother, brother Carl Brown gave an excellent message on the cross. We have to look to the cross yeah. daily. Amen. We have to remember the sacrifice that he made. Now you can tell the scoffers, well, you know what? Even if it's not true, I haven't lost anything. But if it is true, and you leave this earth not believing, oh, you've lost everything. Do you want to lose everything? Do you really want to spend eternity in the pits of hell because you refuse to believe? Because you didn't think that everything they spoke of this man was true? No, I urge anybody who's watching. If you haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, do it. Do it tonight. Yeah. Don't hesitate. Don't just say some prayer and think you're saved. You have to mean it. You have to mean it. You can't just you can't just you can't just recite a prayer, sign a piece of paper. As I told you before, I did I did that back in the eighties. I should have been saved back in the eighties, according to a certain group, but I wasn't because I just didn't because I was too. Religious back then, right? I was I was caught up in my denomination back then. You know, I thought as long as long as I was as long as I was here in this church in this denomination, I'm good. You know, sign the papers. Like, all right, see you guys. Thank you. Don't come back. <laughs> Basically, what I said to them. I've got my church. I've got my religion. Don't cling to your religion. Amen. Amen. Don't let, don't let the, don't let the denomination, don't let religion uh, take control of you. 
because religion can be flawed. Uh -huh. A lot of times it is flawed. Yeah, it is. Um, a lot of preachers are flawed. Sad to say. I'm not saying I'm not saying that I'm better than any of the preachers out there. I uh, I try my best to <coughs> preach the word and stick to the word though. I uh, I'm very careful about books I read because a lot of authors I don't I don't know them from Adam. Don't know who they are, what they believe. You know, you try to uh, do I try to do my research. You stick to the Bible. You stick to the Word of God. Yes. Amen. You read it. Right. Digest it. Let it sink in. You out there in Facebook land, read it. Let it soak in. And then you'll proclaim like the people did here in in, the, in John in John today. That all the things that John spoke of the man were true. Yeah. It is true. Yes. Everything in this book, from Genesis to Revelation, is true, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And as I said, it all, all points to Jesus. Amen. What a mighty God he is. Amen. So thankful. Yes. Let's pray this evening. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for this evening, for this yes. chance to, to gather and give you praise and worship. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for the great prophets of old, and, uh, people like Isaiah and Jeremiah and, and uh, John the Baptist, Lord, who, who told of the coming of Christ. Yes. Lord, thankful for the sacrifice that Jesus made on yes. Calvary. Thankful that all this is recorded in your word, that we can read it and know that it's true. And Lord, we pray for those who have not accepted the truth yet. We pray that their hearts will be changed. We pray for we pray that, people, that we can reach them, Lord, that we can just plant those seeds, that they can be reached, Lord, and that they will believe. That one day they will believe that everything that was spoken about Jesus is true. Lord, be with us as we go out this week. Give us a boldness. Give us a boldness to spread the good news to everyone we meet. And let us reflect Christ in our words, in our deeds, and in our actions. We give you all the praise and glory in the name of Jesus. Amen.